One week ago, federal judges decided that Wisconsin voters have to have some type of a photo ID to vote in the November 4 elections. And it's up to the Department of Transportation to issue one acceptable form of a state ID. So Jim Miller of the Wisconsin Department of Transportation, thanks for talking to us sure. about the process. Thank you. Um, Testimony in federal and state courts said up to 300,000 people may not have acceptable uh, forms of ID. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a lot of people. Had you guys been doing planning, anticipating a possible order? Well, we had been planning on doing this process, um, this petition process, for about the last three weeks. We weren't basing it on what the court was going to decide. We were going to be ready to go with it this past Monday, no matter what, um, just to give people enough time to get in. Um, if they did need something for voting that they would be able to, you know, obtain something. Um, we have issued approximately 292,000 um, Wisconsin ID cards since July of 2011 when we started uh, issuing the cards for voting purposes. Um, so I'm not sure where the 300,000 number comes from, but I can tell you what we've done up to this point. You've issued 292,000. Correct. So there are that many people who have acceptable form of ID to go to the polls on uh, the 4th of November, correct? Yes. In fact, everyone that has a current driver's license or an identification card issued by the you know, state of Wisconsin has what they need to vote right now. There is no particular card that says it's a voter ID or you know you need to come in for something special if you've already got a driver's license. You're all set. Okay. Now, what about someone? Let's talk about the X number of people who may not have the acceptable photo ID. Let's talk about the process. Sure. So, um, how can they apply for a photo ID given the time deadline here, sir? Well, they'd come into our office and they would bring in with them uh, their proof of residency, which is a utility bill, a bank statement, items like that. Um, they would also need to pro provide us with what's called a proof of identity. Um, those items can include social security card, student ID, um, check stub, uh, W-2 forms, 1099 forms, things like that. Um, they would also need to provide us with their social security number and that we run a check with on our online verification system to make sure it's the same person and the date of birth that they're providing us with. Um, we would also take their photo when they can come in by us and um, if they don't have uh, proof of citizenship or proof of name and date of birth, we can enter into the petition process. Proof of citizenship and name and date of birth are usually accomplished by the same document and that's a certified birth certificate. So they would apply through the petition process um, if they did not have the government issued document available to them. Um, and then we would take that petition and forward it with the rest of our information up to a central office location who then sends the petition over to DHS. Um, Department of Health Services then um, checks with their database if the person was born in Wisconsin yes. or they will uh, check with the state that the person has notified us that they were born in. The information on the petition is the same as if you would be going into your local courthouse to apply for a certified birth certificate, a copy of your certified birth certificate. Does DOT have any estimates of how many uh state IDs you might have to issue between now and the uh, election day, sir? No, um, but judging from what this week has been, um, we haven't seen a big uptick. Um, we issue approximately 220 a day that are original issuance, so they're not, a, not a replacement card or a renewal card. Um, and we issue, we've been issuing over the past three or four years, we average about 41,000 new cards per year. Okay. So somebody applying has to come in and, and fill out a formal form. Uh, there's actually three three documents they have to have, proof of identity and the actual petition. And what else, sir? Well, the petition we can provide them at the office. They don't have to bring that in with them. Can they draw that? Can they go to the website? They can go to the website. In, in fact, they should go to the website if they have an opportunity to to check what other proofs of residency might be used and what other proofs of identity could be used. If they want to print, you know, fill out and print out the the um, certain the uh, petition they can do that as well and bring that in with them okay and all this is free because that was one of the changes that the courts ordered. correct correct the process of, of looking into their birth certificate is at no cost to them um, 
Now, you and I know there's at times been some long lines in DMV offices, but they just have to uh, go into the same lines as if they were seeking a driver's license, or uh, correct? Well, I'm glad you asked that because starting next week, if we haven't already started it at some of our offices, we'll be going into, uh, we'll be allowing those customers that are there for an identification card for voting purposes to kind of get a thing, a pass to the front of the line. Um, so we will give them priority service. We did that back in 2012 when we were coming up to an election as well, when the one time that people needed to provide a voter ID or an identification card for voting, we were able to do that and we will continue to do that process at least through this election. Let's go back over something that you said because I think it's really important. If, a, okay. if someone living in Wisconsin was born in, say, downstate Illinois or Springfield, Illinois, mm -hmm. He or she couldn't be expected to drive there to get a, a copy of their birth certificate. But now you're saying state officials in Wisconsin would actually check with uh, officials in, in that Illinois. other state yes. or any other state? Yeah, any other any of the other 49 states, including Por uh, along with Puerto Rico, um, they will make the checks with um, to see if there is a birth certificate on file with the information that the person has provided us. Um, are there any very real time deadlines? In other words, if someone doesn't apply for the third week in October, do you think they can overcome the paperwork? We're, we still don't know how long it's going to take another state. We're hoping we can get the results back in two weeks. Um, for the state of Wisconsin, I can speak on people who applied earlier in the week. We've already gotten those back and have been able to issue those products. Um, they, they're, everything, all of our products, our identification cards and our driver's licenses are centrally issued nowadays. So when we get the word back from DHS that there is a record on file and that we can issue, the first thing that goes out to them is a receipt which they're allowed to vote with. Um, that's one of the uh, one of the picture. I, it has your picture and your signature. They are on. allowed to vote. With, they are with allowed. Their correct. Um, the first thing that goes out is that. So that, and then it also indicates that the license, the uh, identification card, will be mailed to them within the next five to seven business days. Let's say someone is unsure of whether they have the right documents. They can go to the website, but they can well. If they come in having completed the petition, mm -hmm. thinking they have the right documents, but they don't, how is DOT workers going to help them with that? We can walk them through what, what documents you need. Um, we'll also you know, take a look at everything they have as a whole and, and see what they've got. Um, but we can you know, go through the documents that they have and help make sure they have a list of what the proper documents are. And if someone doesn't have a so social security card, mm -hmm. next steps? Um, well, the social security cards are free. Um, you have to apply through your local social security administration office. Um, so they could apply that way. Um, other proofs of identity don't include the social security cards, so they could bring in like a W-2, a 1099 form, um, a student ID, um, things like that. But again, go to the website because there's about 15 documents listed there on what we can accept for identity. Some of the biggest needs may, may be in Wisconsin's biggest cities, the Milwaukee, the Madisons, the Green Bay. Are DMV offices going to be open for any extended hours to service these people who need state IDs to vote? That's a very good question and not having any, it just coincidentally, we have two offices in the Milwaukee area that are beginning Saturday hours tomorrow. Um, again, just, just for state ID processing? No, for all, for all, all of our DMV services. For all DMV services, yeah. excuse me for that. Um, this was in the planning for, since it May of last year, had nothing to do with you know ID cards needed for voting or anything like that. We just were looking for a way to extend service hours to our customers who might not make it through the normal, you know, normal days of the week that we're open. Um, so we're piloting in, in two sites in Milwaukee, at our Milwaukee Southwest Station on Grange and Loomis, and at our Milwaukee Northwest Station on um, 73rd and Mill Road. Uh, if that's a successful pilot, we will be, um, we anticipate opening five or six other offices around the state in the coming year, um, and they will be at you know, various cities around the state so that we can cover the majority of our population. DMV offices in rural areas, you know, the Florence counties, the Taylor counties, the Bayfield counties. Right. Um, how can anybody seeking a state ID know when those offices are open? Uh, have those hours recently been cut back because of budget constraints? Actually, those hours have recently in 2012 or 2011 been increased. Um, when the ID law came into effect, um, part of the uh, Part, part of the statute said that we will offer service to our customers at least 20 hours an, a week per county. 
Um, so for instance, the Florence station, which we used to go to once every other month, mm -hmm. we now go to two days a week, 10 hours a day. Um, we're generally open there 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Again, check the website, whether it be a Monday, Friday schedule or a Monday, Wednesday schedule or a Tuesday, Thursday schedule. Okay. Um, how much additional, is there an estimate of how much additional cost DOT will incur to um, meet the uh, judge's mandate to issue these state IDs, sir? I am not aware of what that would, you know, what that cost would be. Okay. Well, finally, to someone out there watching this who has a question, I think I may need a state ID to vote. Just summarize the process one more time. Okay. Please, Jim. First of all, if you have a driver's license or an identification card already issued by us, you have everything you need to vote with. Um, secondly, we feel for those that don't have it, we've come up with a process that would help them obtain an ID card from us um, without having to, if they don't have a government issued birth certificate available, um, and yet the process still keeps the integrity of our identification card in check because there's several background checks that we make to make sure we're, we're pretty thorough in, in believing that is the right person we're issuing the card to. And they should also do this pretty quickly, right, given right. the turnaround, especially if they need documents from out of state? Yeah, if you were born out of state, the sooner you can do this, the better, and the more confident we are that we can get you something to vote with by the time, that, by the, time the election arrives. So the judges ruled one week ago. Um, DOT has a lot of time to, has had a week to think and make plans. Are you pretty confident that this is going to be a manageable Yes, event? yes, and so far it has. And, and like I said, our, our planning started about three weeks ago when the Supreme Court of Wisconsin said that we could start issuing identification cards for voting if um, without, you know, without the overturn of the court. And we could do it if we could find it, figure out a way to issue it without charging people for other government documents. Very good. Jim Miller of the Wisconsin Department of Transportation, thank you so much for explaining the uh, new mandate. Thank you. Thank you.